Captain, I need it. Shit's fire. Before we move on, I want to do a shout out to Pin the Gas. It's a podcast that I found on you. Do we found on you? They, their mates, oh, yeah, Andy, Andy Rowe. Yeah, so Andy, Andy follows our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had me on um, just recently. They haven't. I don't think they broadcast it. Yet, but it's called Pin the Gas, and it got Andy Rowe, Chris the Show, Simco, and Jules. The host. Hello, everybody. How they're, are you? they're on YouTube, aren't they? They're on YouTube, yeah. Are they nice people? Mate, they're lovely. Okay. And they, they swear they're, they, they, they're like, they, I think they're, they were inspired by us. Oh, good, okay. And they're Americans, so they're, 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 they're confused so, about many things. And we can forgive them for and that. We can forgive them for yeah. that because they have guns. We can. <laughs> And bombers and shit. Well, right? I, I, I wish them well, and, and hopefully we can talk to yeah, them one day. It's, we do it. Combine the they, podcast. They get really cool guests on that show, really cool guests, and they have a great sense of humour, and they don't mind when you, you, you say fucking stuff on their show. That's so, really good. So Neither do good. we. Fine. They're good. They're good. Fuck, Jesus. Fuck. What is up, everybody? Welcome back again to Pin the Gas Podcast, where we cater to your motorcycle and motorcycle racing needs and desires as always i am the host of the show cool jewels joined by andy and delix row what's up Chris, everybody the show sim co and from one of my favorite podcasts to listen to in the morning the man with a really smooth voice my man boris mihelovich of moto pg give it up oh geez give it up to boris you guys. thank you so much it's an absolute <laughs> pleasure and honor to be here with you folks boris what time is it over there uh, quarter past bastard, right? I think it's, it's still dark. It's quarter to five, eight in the morning. Quarter to five in the morning, and yep. this dude is here. We can't thank you enough, Boris, for freaking joining no, us, man. Not. Shit. The, the, the pleasure is mine, I can assure you. My man, my man is the caffeine machine. You got your coffee and shit ready? <laughs> I think my dog just walked in. I think he wants to go outside for a pee. I saw, I saw the pictures, uh, Boris. They're cute little pups you got. Yeah. Yep, that's that's him. Him. Good luck with the shoes, okay? <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh um, so, so we we, we were talking. We were talking. Uh, we, we were just talking a little bit uh, before the show um, about about like our, our mission, and and I I wanted to I wanted to explain before we start recording that um, one of the reasons why why we started this thing was because um, Andy recommended me to to Moto PG, right? So I was like, I need something else to listen to because at six in the morning, when I'm listening to Crash, I'm listening to, 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 okay, so let's talk about uh, MotoGP this weekend. I'm like, oh my God, yo, you're putting me kill to sleep. Me, kill so me fuck. now. Kill yeah. Me yeah. Now. I'm like, oh my God. You know, the, the, the sprockets are, I'm like, oh my God, fuck. I need something else. Andy, what do you got? <laughs> So I was like, I was like, great! I have Spotify. Yes! Oh my God! Yes! Finally, someone, someone with a little bit more color. I think, I I think a lot of people. Um, sorry to interrupt, but with podcasts, we thought, you know, we didn't know what a podcast was when we started, and then I listened to them. I said, I can't do that shit. I cannot. <laughs> I can't talk to people like that. Um, and I think a lot of people. It's like with customizing motorcycles. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> I'm dead. You know, you know stop. Shut right? fire. Just stop talking. Um, and, and your opinion is not interesting unless you can make it interesting in the way you present it. So, you know, and, and MotoGP is, is a sport that's rife to have the piss yeah. taken out of it because it's full of prima donnas <laughs> and it's really up. It's like, it's like Formula One in many ways. It's right up itself. And I the could, characters are fantastic. We, we love them, but we laugh at them, you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I could bench press these guys. Like, come on. Like, why are we, why are we throwing shots at them? Like. It, it, it just it, it just it just got so tiring. So so thank you to Andy for showing me y'all's podcast because I wake right the fuck up because half the things that you guys say, especially like like Fredo, I'm like yeah, this is this is great. The Shumla, the Shumla, <laughs> Shumla, baby. It's like you know, uh, I like to talk about the race. I'm like I don't, <laughs> I fucking love that guy, bro. Uh, I wish I knew what he looked like because it, it'll. I have an image in my a, head, and I'm pretty sure that's not what he looks it's like. It's a so. secret. It's a secret. He don't want to be sh- showed himself in public, and we respect that. That's fine. Fredo, shout out to you and to Tugs as well. Okay, Tugs, we love you guys. We, we we love you guys. Listen to you all the time. Now, before I open the floor to this gentleman, Boris, yo, tell us a little about yourself, man. Anything you want to know, like how how tall you are, how many times a day you shit, like you know, just <laughs> let's not like. 
What you got I, for I'm, us? I'm the son of poor immigrant parents that came out to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> Sam. But, um, no, I mean, I've, I've been a, uh, a writer. I'm a writer. Um, I've been in the motorcycle game for, Jesus, most of my life, actually, probably 30, 35 years, uh, doing bike stuff. Uh, I've worked for every major magazine while that magazines existed. In motorcycling, I've been the editor of um, various magazines here in Australia, and, and as a mag as the magazine culture died out, we have to reinvent ourselves. Obviously, um, it, there's there's not much call for magazine editors in the world anymore. So you know, online is where it is, and um, that's pretty much how it came about. So I, I started my own. Um, I, I have two two web pages that I host and, and do, and sort of working my way through the swamp that is fucking social media which is just awful right <laughs> especially you know for us older guys right we the fuck is that even i mean you know yeah. i'm still struggling to understand what tiktok is about apart from just <laughs> dancing at the camera that's nice but it's, it's too short the to fat to you know uh, <laughs> i love it is it now i seem to not have a problem i'm kidding <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it. And sort of, um, if you want to know how Moto PG started, it's basically the three of us. We've known each other for a long time. I've known Dave or Tugs for, for a million years. Um, Fredo, I met a few years ago. And he, the reason we keep his identity secret is because he's he's pretty well hooked up in the paddock. He knows yes. a lot of stuff. Yeah. He knows, he dead set knows people. Um, so knowing who he is may may be a point of conflict in his current job so you know until until he can sort of rectify that we'll we'll just keep his identity on the qt very cool boris that's very cool that, that makes absolute sense because there are some times where i question if his accent is real but i'm just going to run with it so. <laughs> <laughs> look to to, to 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 tell you the truth he is actually italian Yes. Um, yes, oh, he does okay. put that accent on, but we we all learn talk like this from parents who come from other country in, in Europe. A long time, very good. You know, I, I can do sort of the Serbian accent. He can do the Italian accent. But you know. it, it, it's so good. Like it, it was, it was a very animated voice, which is why I thought I was like, oh, he's it, great. for, he's for great. like three for three episodes straight, I was like, bro, this is it's so good. It might be real, but it's it might be real. But it sounds bad. Like I'm like I'm like trying to try to figure that out. But um, yeah, that, that's interesting. I, I'm, I'm glad you know you guys are you guys are boys, um, and, and that y'all were able to start something. Mates, that's exactly. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how we kind of follow that sort of archetype. I feel like it's much. It makes for a better um, sense of synergy if you can do these type well, of things with people. Absolutely, and and the, the, we all love the sport. The sport. It's the greatest sport in the world. There is no other sport that brings you that level of. Um, sort of bravery, uh, cruelty, um, absolute, utter, you know, atavistic joy. It, it, it's, you know, I, I'm sold. I sold my soul to, mo to motorcycle racing a long time ago, as we all have, obviously. But, um, and, and, and to, to have it spoken about by the normal podcasters in such a dreary, they're, they're fucking boring motherfuckers. It stops, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> you know? That's what I'm saying. Yo. That's, that's yeah. like with motorcycle media. You pricks take the most wonderful and exciting thing we can do and you write boring bullshit about it go fuck yourselves get out of the fucking industry you know just, just, just like just like your beef with freaking uh uh what is his name simon patterson uh, patterson's <laughs> just a fucking virtue signaling fuck with it's getting laid for the very first time he's got no idea man's clueless I, I actually know his girlfriend his current girlfriend really oh yeah 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 she's yeah. been around she's been around oh. We, we could go into this. You know, no, 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 let's not. No, let's we're, we're not, not going to because you'll get sued. Yeah, I don't want to get things. shut down. I don't want to get stopped. Hold on. <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't have enough viewers yet. We don't have enough viewers yet. So I think we're safe. Let me, let yeah. me begin the questioning panel. I'm going to take over here. <laughs> wow. Sure. Boris is 35 years of writing recklessly. Is that correct? <laughs> well, I'm still alive. I've got my arms and legs. So it's, it's yeah, I mean, I, I sold my soul to motorcycling. When I was 16, we can get licenses in Australia at 16 and nine months, and that's pretty much when I signed up. Um, I only bought a car first time in my life. I mean, I'm 61 now. I bought a car three years ago because I moved out of Sydney into okay. a rural area, mm -hmm. and I figured I can't really cart firewood on a motorcycle. I need a car. <laughs> you <know? There> you <laughs> go. So, so you decided to move out to the sticks. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Sydney was, you know, I've lived in Sydney my whole life and it's, it's just a, a crowded urban environment. You know, I see, like most of us, I seek some peace in my life. You know, I, I'm, at, I'm at a stage now where, you know, I've, I've done pretty much everything I wanted to do. I spent 10 years on Outlaw Motorcycle Club. I've, I've done all I need to do in that thing. I need to sort of devote some time to, to, to me and my wife. Enjoy yourself, yes. Course. And it seems through it seems I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jules. It seems through through your channel and the Moto PG uh, uh, podcast that you guys are having a blast. I mean, um, not only you guys, but we have a blast listening to you guys as well. So, well, I'm I'm very flattered. I mean, obviously, if we enjoy it and we sound like we're enjoying, we we love it. We love doing it because it's so much fun. And and anything you can do and laugh while you do it, you know, you, you're winning. You're winning. Yeah. You're winning. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. It's awesome. I mean, if, if if we if we if we weren't having fun like doing this, then this would just feel like a freaking drag. Yeah, we, exactly. We... Why why do it if it's boring? You know, if we could have a laugh, we could have a joke. We can, you know, um, yeah. Australians, as you know, have, have a very um, sort of wicked sense of humor, and we call it taking the piss out of each other. Right. <laughs> you know, um, I, I found that that you know, my, I've I've been to America once, and I, I loved it. Right, I thought. This is actually, I went to LA for the Indian launch, the FDR launch. Oh, okay. And it, yeah, and um, I thought, fuck, this is just amazing. It's, I just so always wanted to go to America. And we we're driving through LA and we went to Santa Monica. I thought, this is oh. like a fucking documentary. Every <laughs> fucking movie I've ever seen is exactly, this is the term, that's the fucking East River. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah fucking motorcycle in that shit, right? It was fucking great. <laughs> and, uh, I, found Amer I found Americans to be absolutely the most, wonderful, polite, engaging human beings. I sat in one of your bars and I, I got drunk with a bunch of them. That was great. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank it, you, Lawrence. It, it, it also depends on where you're You have such a, you, you have such a um, um, innocent view of, of America, especially in Santa Barbara. Um, I'm a, slightly younger than you guys, so I, I, I play video games. The moment I went to Santa Barbara, I was like, yo, I killed a lot of people here in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I oh no! With, with all due respect, I walked down Muscle Beach and I, I was confronted by a very large, angry black man who wanted me to give him drugs, money, uh, money or drugs. <laughs> and then I told him I didn't have any. Realized from my accent that I wasn't from America. I went, oh, sorry, dude. You know, I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> what the fuck, yeah, man. Gosh, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't want to kill me at that stage, which was cool. Uh... So, so, and, and, and these guys piece in. Chris, you got anything? To, you got anything to add to that, brother? What um, uh, uh, what do you think about the Ducati team orders with uh, Zarco not passing uh, Pecco? The, the ones they keep <laughs> denying exist. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, look, it's, it's we know that this happens in sport, and you know, Ducati have been jonesing for a win ever since Casey Stoner gave them their last one ten million years ago. You know, hence the eight motorcycles on the grid. We we fully expect there to be ten Ducatis on that on that grid in the next year or two. Um, it's the scattergun effect. Um, I understand they want they just want it so bad. And and you know, you guys will appreciate this. This is actually MotoGP is Italy versus Spain. It's got nothing yes. to do with any any other countries at all. It's nice that we you know you guys don't have an American there at the moment. You know. Um, but um, we, we have one Australia. We may get another one there when this one, you know, goes by the way. So, but that's what it is. It's Italy versus Spain. And Ducati is the only it, – it, it's, it's all about national pride. It's all about, you know, doing their, their, their Ducati, Ducati, Bologna, that bullshit, right? Of the Bologna got, bullet. I love yeah, it. The Bologna bullet. They've, and obviously they've got team orders. It's bullshit to say they haven't. Yeah, I figured. Uh, what 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 rate? Can you guys help me out? What what race was that? It was um the one where uh, Thailand where Jack Miller was was oh. riding. Wait, was it Thailand where Jack Miller was riding the front the whole time? Hmm. Well, we yeah, and, and, yeah. and the, then the the the, the freaking overtakes. I was like, I was like, yeah, there was definitely some some team orders there. I was like, I was like, this is the whole rumor of them not having team orders. I was like, you you really think those motherfuckers are not going to give team orders? This did, you, close. did you see the did you see the latest clip that they published um where 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 Gigi walks into the Primac garage and they're all hugging him and kissing him and they're obviously thanking Zarko and then there's a, a thing caught on a hot mic where he says, you know, here we do what Gigi asks. We Whoa. do what Gigi asks. 
I, I did catch that. Off, but I didn't think know? anything. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, come on, guys, you know. Well, there's a lot of things going on in Ducati. I mean, that uh, incident with the tire pressures and has been building up. And now you have uh, um, these other journalists are involved um, with. Oh, you mean Matt, Matt Oxley? Matt Oxley, Simon Patterson. These people might not be allowed back in the paddock because apparently Ducati feels that they snitch out on some information that they didn't want leaked. Oh, look, um, but, but this happens Simon, all the time. Sure, and both both Simon. Please understand the context of this. Both Simon um, or oh, Matt. Matt. Matt is a Matt is a great operator. I actually know. Yes. Matt. Um, I don't have a lot of time for Patterson because he's just a clickbait bloke. You know, he's he just made himself famous by trying to be controversial and there's ways of doing that and he doesn't get it. But um, they come from the, the the English school of journalism, that tabloid. Oh, we look for scandal and try to find scandal kind of thing. Whereas you know. Our tabloid media and your tabloid media is a little bit more circumspect with how it deals with, with, you know, you know what you're fucking dealing with, dude. If you want, if you want the stories, there's ways of writing them without turning into a dickhead. But that'll pass, you know. That'll pass. So, um, Simon Patterson reminds me. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Andy, but Simon Patterson reminds me for 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 the viewers who who are watching that are still new to the sport, um, Americans primarily. Patterson reminds me of Skip Bayless on ESPN. Always trying to stir shit that's not there, and yes. Skip Bayless is a fucking dickhead, and I hate this dude. Yeah, shit it's, it's, click, it's clickbait, you know. Yeah, exactly. it's clickbait. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm gonna say something that I know is controversial. Like, how can they go to Qatar because Qatar is cruel to women? Well, they're fucking going to India and Azerbaijan, and you haven't said a word about or <laughs> Kazakhstan, the fucking Borat Grand Prix. <laughs> You know, what do you think? Women's <laughs> women's rights there are fucking sacrosanct? Fuck off, right? <laughs> what would what, what, you think of that layout for Kazakhstan, by the way? I thought it was kind of trash. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> fabulous. It's, it looks like Austria. Drag yeah. strip corner, drag strip corner. Yeah, no, I was yeah. like, I was like, what what is this? It looks like a Formula One track. Like this That's like, exactly what it is. Yeah, That's that, what it is. Formula One. They're not building tra- they're not building tracks for motorcycles, they're building tracks for Formula One cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 just that just j- goes to show like how much care that that the rest of the world, not Spain, not Italy, cares for motorcycle racing. Well, you look it's at it. How, really. how, how many rounds do we have in Spain, and how many rounds do we have in Italy? Fucking like forty five. Yeah, like I mean, look, yeah, we have one racetrack in Australia, Phillip Island, and we have Talon Bennett. Phillip Island's a great track. Um, you guys have, you know, Circuit of Americas. Yes. Right? And the rest of your tracks are pretty shit like pretty ours shit. yeah um and and but philip island is i don't know if you ever get a chance to come down and come down and, and ride the track it's spectacular but the infrastructure around it are you fucking kidding me they haven't got a grandstand we don't have a oh, grandstand whoa they, no i didn't know that and then no, not- there's no grandstand at philip island they build these things out of scaffolding each year and motherfuckers <laughs> sit out in the fucking rain it's right on bass Strait, so it gets uh, you know, Antarctic winds blast you. It's fucking horrifying. It's mud. I mean, the camping was cancelled this year because we've had a lot of rain. So no, 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 no bloke can camp there. So they've cancelled camping. Hmm. So, you know, go fuck yourself. No one cares. Damn. So there's no there's no grandstand. It's no. just yeah. it's just a, a crane with like a piece of plywood. Well, no, they do. They, 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 there are no <laughs> toilets. They do this also in Daytona. They toilets. Yeah, they bring oh, in portaloos. Oh God, Jesus. that's oh, terrible, yo! And how much are people paying for tickets to go there? Oh fuck! Well, the last time I was, I'm going again this year, but they're they're not cheap. They're, they were about 120 bucks a day. What the fuck? Dude? That's a little expensive. Yeah, it's 68, I believe, a day over here yeah, in America. And, and, and then they they price gouge you on 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 what they call food over there, which is I mean, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. You know, you think, I mean, I know you guys eat a lot of shit, but we, we our trackside <laughs> stuff is fucking viable. Here's a, here's a roast potato. That'll be $8. Here's some oh, corn that we've cooked for four days. That'll be $12. You want a can of beer? 12 bucks. Jesus fuck Christ. off. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, I, I, the, I'm and the police? Fuck me, man. You'd think, you'd think this was North Korea, the way they carry it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Need a popcorn bucket to piss in. Like, Pretty you know much, I mean? man. It's, it's it's fucking diabolical, right? But uh, I, 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 I'll, I'll take some photos this year when I go down. If you can please. imagine, you see pictures of the Somme. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> during World War One. That's what it looks like. Mad <laughs> shit everywhere. Ah, wow. We well, like, <clears throat> you, you, one of these days. I, I don't know if you've been, but like one of these days, man, we'd love to we'd love to have you here at Coda, bro. Oh man, I I, I would. Now's probably Coda's not a good sick. time to travel anywhere, given <laughs> what the ins- yeah, what the donkey pox, like all yeah. that shit. Uh, well, donkey pox and fucking, you know, what, what's going on over there? We won't right. talk about it. Right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be getting on a plane anytime soon because I may not get home. But I would love to. You know, I, I want to. I've got America's on my bucket list. You know, very much. Yeah, a, a proper yeah, and- you know, ride around kind of thing. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. And and a bit before I open the floor to you guys again, um, yeah, because I I feel like you know despite despite the shit that people talk about um, of like Coda's track and whatnot, the place is undeniably gorgeous. And Andy can vouch for me. Like like when when you're there, the the track is in the middle of um, this like gigantic field of of grass, right? But when you're there, it feels like this place should have its own zip code because you go inside there's there, there's a stage area for for performers there's food trucks there's a fucking soccer field like they knew only europeans are going to be there because texas's sport is football so yeah. i didn't see i didn't see no or, or or hand egg i refer it to the rest of the world but the, the, there's nothing american about being inside <laughs> inside <laughs> coda other than the actual flag, so I'm like, yeah, they, they definitely. But it's it's beautiful, it's beautiful, and and yeah. my, my first my first time was was back in uh, was back in 2020, and that's how I met Andy, and I was like, man, this is this is gorgeous. Yeah, out, everything outside looks like shit, but once you're inside, it's like it's another universe. <laughs> I'm serious, like like the houses, yeah. the houses look look like like they're like all like run down, except for this one barbecue spot that looks like that looks like a shithole, but has amazing fucking barbecue. I think, the best I, I think also you the track is privately owned, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So yes. same as Phillip Island, it's privately owned racetrack, and mm-hmm. you know, like I, I far be it for me to say that our governments are corrupt and all this. You know, like have, have a paper bag full of money same. and all that kind of shit. But you know, you can only look at Spain. Spain's a great example. I mean, they they, they there's this fucking production line of magnificent motorcycle riders being churned out one after mm-hmm. another. And the depth of talent, you know, Acosta, uh, Munoz, you know, all these amazing young riders that are coming through. Um, the, the, the only other, you know, Italy is the one mainstay with Rossi's VR46 Academy. They're producing some good Italian riders and now Japanese guys joining them next year. But that's all government supported. They get government funding in Spain. They get government funding in Italy. These tiny, I mean, motorsport is, is part of their DNA over there. You know, they really, really love that shit. Whereas we, you know, you guys are, you know, in fear of it. To, to football and, and, and baseball and basketball and we're fucking into cricket and what we call football over here is, you know, this, it's fucking unbelievable. Um, you know, we, the, the, the bogan, we call them bogans, you, you probably white trash over in your part of the world, but you're fucking dead, you <laughs> flat screen TVs, fucking pickup trucks. You know, we're drowning in petrol prices. We're now buying fucking Dodge Rams. <laughs> you <fucking, laughs> you serious? You're serious with your Dodge Rams are now one of the biggest selling cars here. You know, now we, we, we're finally getting the Toyota Tundra. We never had that. Now we have it. You know, we've had... You ever driven one? Small, They're sick. Hey? Oh, I don't know. Ever... Fuck. I kind of want one and I think people are going to fucking laugh at me because I don't need one. But I kind of want one because they make your dick hard. You know? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, drive that's what I'm saying. Truck and shit. Yeah. Just, that's just get it stock. About. Just get it stock though, because you know if you start adding a lift kit, there, there, there's this, there's this thing here in, in the United States. I don't know if it's, if it's for them, but in New York, when you see like one of those Dodge Rams or Tacomas with like the lift kit, yeah, you know yeah, the guys yeah. what I'm talking about, where they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. eight we feet higher. That, we got that shit here. Me, 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 and the boys are like, oh man, they have such a big truck to compensate for their tiny dick. So like. <laughs> Chris, Chris t- t- take the mic away from me, man. Go ahead. Facts, facts. Uh, of course, a, a, a question I have for you is, is back to MotoGP. Is, uh, what do you think about the sprint race format next year? Um, I, I'm in favor of it. I think it's, it's you know, as we said, there's, there's, the, the, the jury seems to be split on it. You know, half go, ah, oh, fuck, you know, it's always been the, the, the race on Sunday. That's what it's been all about. That's the showcase. and. Dorna is a business. Dorna wants to make money. No one watches unless you know, you're crazy like me. I watch Friday and Saturday practice, but no one else does. Um, the Saturday racing, it's basically replacing free practice four. Um, so there's no argument about, oh, we're blowing up engines, we're using up tyres. They're not. Um, 
they can get just as injured in free practice four as they can, or in qualifying as they can in a 10, 10 lap sprint race. You know, more racing, I, I don't see it as a bad thing, but it'll certainly change the entire complexion of who's winning, who's not. I mean, Mark Marquez, that thing is made for him. Sprint Oof. racing is made for yeah. Mark Marquez. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. fast on lap one and he just piles it on. Whether he'll be fit enough next year, pff, you know, we're seeing that he's not the mark of old. I, I, that's what I'm seeing. I don't know what you guys are seeing. You know? uh, let's touch on that, Boris. Yeah, yeah. I'll let's touch. Let's touch, <laughs> let's touch. Let's touch on that because I, I am. I am curious. Yeah, I, I listen to you, and you. You always talk about he's always touching his shoulder, massaging it, and every so time they himself. they they pan on to him, he does one of those like Whoop, ee, everything's okay. But but. I mean, the guy, the guy is uh, performing, even though that he just has surgery, the guy is performing very well. And if you give him the off season to train and, and to recoup his body, he's going to be lethal next season. I don't, I don't see him. I don't see Fabio or, or anybody, or even Pico uh, competing against him. Look, I, I think there's two things going on. He won that, that fucking Honda that he's on. Only he can ride it with any, with any degree of Elan. Yes. Know? But he hasn't had a chance to develop that all year. So that's kind of sort of frozen. It's, it's stagnant. His handicap. That's, yeah, that's part of the issue he's having. The other issue that he's having is that and, and he's not the, the, the fire brand he was when he first started. He's a bit older. He's had some serious injuries. He's one fucking face plant away from planet Diplopia. Again. But, 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 but Boris, know? but Boris... <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. You had this conversation with me. You told me once they are all one step away from. Sure, and 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 they and they are, but the issue here is that he's already visited Planet Diplopia. <laughs> <laughs> and he can That's he true. can return at any time. It's like Jorge Lorenzo. You know, he he could race right now, and you know he's a five time world championship, one of the greatest riders of all time. But if he breaks his back, he ain't going to be walking anytime soon. I got, I got a, I got a question about this Jorge Lorenzo. I, I, been reading about. Uh, so we're going back in time, okay? Long time ago. Oh dear, Jorge. Dear George. <laughs> that was you, was it not? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. That was you. I, I used to read all those posts <clears throat> for so long. You wrote those posts. Oh dear, Jorge. Oh my God, what did this? Chumla this, chumla that. I used to love them, man. And I, all this time, I'm like, I, I'm telling you guys, the guy that's been writing all oh, dear Jorge, that is Boris. Yeah, yeah, that was me. That's um, awesome. Awesome. That's, that's part of the reason that MotoGP got developed. up. Developed. Um, yeah, developed from that. I mean, I, found, I find George, I love him to death. I think the paddock is poorer without a character like that. Let, let's face it, MotoGP is, is a soap opera for men. Yes, we we yeah, yeah. We, we love the characters. We love you know. I need we need more characters. I like when Rossi and Biaggi were punching on in the in, in Park of the Main. That yeah. that kind of shit, that tension that that that's what we want to see. That's um, what I'm saying. Bro. And, and George, George is weird as fuck. He is just one <laughs> fantastically weird motherfucker. He's completely on planet George. Yes. Um, great planet and, George. Yeah, planet George. You know. So I, I started writing. You know. Well, dear George stuff and it kind oh of, dear Jorge it off. It w yeah it went off it went off we, <laughs> it did eventually, I gotta yeah, read them. eventually that Facebook page got hacked by some Vietnamese fuckers um, so. <laughs> I was looking for him today Boris I was oh, looking for yeah, those but, uh, look all my stuff is on bike me um, and, and on the uh, website page yeah okay. on the website you can find it and I'll, I'll probably be reproducing dear George in some format or another but you know, at the moment, Alicia Spargo is becoming my new dear George. Yeah. He, he's so fucking weird. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's weird. I, I, I actually like him. I, I, I like, like at at first, like I thought it was like uh, I thought this guy was gonna annoy the shit out of me. But like after after seeing like where he is right now and like how he speaks, I'm like, I kind of like this guy. He speaks he speaks English like a fucking American dude. So I'm just like, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't i can't explain it but it's there so i'm just like yo, i i kind of like this guy i mean I'm, I'm i'm not a big i'm not a big eight fan i'm a i'm a suzuki guy so that's that we're we're going to hell but um pretty I, much yeah that's that's worked out not very well for for hamamatsu you know the the who <laughs> <laughs> 
Suzuki's made in Hamamatsu in Japan. The hammer of oh. Hamamatsu. Oh, why, why, why do I think why do I think you were talking about the substitute riders? I was like, oh, you mean Sony PlayStation? <laughs> like, I don't I don't know who Nintendo Naka, was. Naka, what like, the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> yo, oh, can you settle this? Can you settle this? Like, I, I I don't I don't I don't know if you really like him, but um, I'm I'm not afraid of sharing my opinion. I think Nakagami is buns. I think I, I think that you know Ayagura could could be possibly like way better than him. Just from just from what I was watching. Maybe you guys see something that I don't, but I just I think I think Nakagami is valuable to HRC because a he's he's a very analytical rider. You know, he, he spends a lot of time staring at clipboards and fucking all that bullshit or shit, right? Um, but he also crashes his fucking brains out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He crashes his fucking brains out. So Honda get a lot of fucking um, technical information about what it's like to put in a gravel trap at 200 kilometers an hour. Yeah. But they've had a lot of information regarding that of late. So a Polis Pagaro. Fuck me. <laughs> the fuck is that even? Nut. <laughs> but I, I i don't i don't know i just i uh i i, I just i just think that um i agree could be like that next threat if you know we we all like to it. think that and and the, but the moment they sit on a moto gp bike the world oh, changes <laughs> yeah the world changes man that, that you know those those seven or seven six five fucking triumphs are all well and butte and i'm sure we've all ridden bikes like that but a fucking moto gp moto gp bike is another monster altogether. It's a fucking monster. You know? it's, it's, especially the, the, the Ducatis. I mean, look at yeah. Chris's tattoo. <laughs> All of them. Fuck. All of them are crazy. But yeah, the Ducati is a nasty machine. Um, it really is. There's fucking like 20 of them on, on this. So there better be fucking. There yeah. Better be. <laughs> oh, shit. You know what I mean? So, win. Like, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Grid, they better win. By the you, fall, you, by the fall, boys. I was so scared mid-season when, when Suzuki said, said they're going to drop out and they're, and then they're thinking of another team. I was like, oh, my God, it's going to be another Ducati team. Fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll, we'll just put a fucking Royal Enfield sticker on it or a Harley Davidson sticker on it. That's what they do in the, in the lower classes, you know. Here's a, here's a fucking, you know, triumph. We'll put a, motor, we'll put a MV Augusta sticker on it. Right? Fuck off. Yeah. KTM yeah, does yeah. that. Yeah, I never, I never understood that. <laughs> for, for real, I, I mean, I so speaking of KTM, uh, um, with with the Jack Miller move, right? That had um, what, what what's his name? Stepsister fucker. Oh, Miguel Oliveira. So, <laughs> Stepsister fucker. I, I, am I wrong? No, you're no, fine, man. The dentist. The dentist. The you're dentist good. You're good. The sister. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You're good. <laughs> But with, with with that move that, that that had him go, oh shit, damn, we're gonna get replaced. I, I I thought it was a very smart move. I I think I think that you know it, um, Jack Miller is gonna be great for uh, Factory KTM, and I'm a huge Brad Binder fan. He's like he's like my second after Suzuki, so I'm like, man, this is gonna be great. Brad Binder, Jack Miller teammates, fuck yeah, let's go. I I think what Jack needed, um, and I I know Jack. I, I've met his family; they're wonderful people. And Jack, um, okay just to, to appreciate where Jack is, Jack's been given one year contract by Ducati since forever. They, they, and that's very hard sort of wrap your head around. You want them to commit and give you a two year contract or something like that. Also, um, Jack doesn't speak Italian to be part of an Italian team where you, and he's just said recently, he always felt like an outsider. Yeah. And he does would, so. You know, um, Ducati want Pecco Pagnai. They want Anaya Bastianini. That's the Italian dream team um going to kdm they're austrians they, they're fucking a bit different you know they, they're they still haven't apologized for world war ii right they're completely <laughs> i mean i met a whole bunch of fucking kdm executives right they still make jokes about that shit right <laughs> not the germans the germans are sorry the austrians said well we, we gave you a leader and what the fuck did you do <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like yeah they're all austrians i mean they're they're one letter away <laughs> you don't know or a few letters away yeah. but yeah, yeah I, hey, I, 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 hey, I, just, I just think that it was it was kind of it was kind of a uh um, jack, jack miller has has been such a class act for for ducati he's been such he's a, great, a, he's a teammate. great teammate he's a great he's, teammate you know he's wonderful um, he hasn't been put in the position yet and he may be next week at phillip island where he may have to let uh, Bagnaya passed, and he will. I don't think he may not do it at Phillip Island because it's his home race. But he 
he, uh, thus far last two, he's been in a position where Peko hasn't been close enough to pass him. Mm-hmm. So he hasn't had to make that fucking call, you know, like, and we're not going to see if he's told that on his dashboard. We're not going to see yeah. that. Bit. Mapping eight. You, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but eight if you was Miller at this point, you're already leaving to go to KTM. Why would you slow down? Well, yeah, that's exactly it. I, I think knowing Jack, Jack understands what this means to Ducati. Does Jack have bad feelings towards Ducati? No, probably not. But, you know, he'd like to leave on a good note if he leaves and if he fucks it up for Bagnaia, and he might, he well may, right, inadvertently. We hope he does. Um, yeah, you know, like, why would you do it? He won't, he won't do it at Phillip Island. I doubt very much he'll do it at Phillip Island. But he may do it at Malaysia and he may do it at, you know, when they return to Spain. Has has KTM done uh, any type of change or are they expecting uh, a better package to provide him for next season? I've, I've heard rumors, but I want to confirm it with you. Well, I mean, I've heard rumors just like you. We're not we're not that fucking tied up with it, but I okay. can guarantee you, you all know, you all know how KTM works. They, they decide they're going to do something and then they spend five years doing it and then they start to dominate that whatever sport they're in, like Dakar and, um, you know, the lower classes. and Thailand. And, and Thailand. In the rain. They, 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 they can fucking, they're, they're very capable of building a um, superb motorcycle. But I think what you're going to see next year is Honda. HRC really? Is, is, well, man, I mean, like, like Tug said, he said, if there's any company capable of pulling something out of a box and going, here you go, that's HRC. They've got Mark Marquez, as you say. He, he may well be fitter next year and, and, and more aligned with what they're going. And Honda's going to go fucking weed. Because this is this is a sense of honour, you know, face, yeah. Japanese face. Honda's HRC looks like a bucket of shit at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they... the greatest MotoGP team the world has ever seen. And they're down the right now. Yeah, yeah, they're down right now. Not, not, not a constructors' championship, not a riders' championship. Fuck, they've got no points. Mark Marquez has more points than Paul Espagaro. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking, that's disgraceful yeah. for Honda. Will they change management in there? Are they going to get rid of um, the uh, the other guy? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I reckon I, they are. They have I mean, to do I, something. I really, I never really liked them. I, um, I'm referring to um, their management in Honda and, uh, I, it, it, he seemed like a guy always uh, like smothering Mark Marquez and pushing him out there to get hurt. And I don't feel like he actually cares what's really You're going on with him. Pooge? Pooge. Pooge. Well, the leathery fuck, as we like to call him. Pooge, leathery Pooge fuck. Is, Pooge is part owner of that team. That's the problem. Okay. Uh, so yeah. there's no way whatsoever we're going to get rid of him. No. Look, um... P- Puj is part owner of that team, but Honda is Honda is Honda. You know, they can call him into an office and a couple of Yakuza killers could fucking stand over him and say, <laughs> mate, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not happening. You know, on your watch. And look, they, they, they put all their eggs into the Marquez basket, did they not? Why? Yeah, that's true. Why? Why not spread because it out with was, other riders? Yeah, well, good, good question. Um, because only... Mark Marquez was like Casey Stoner. He could ride around the motorcycle's problems. He's that good. I don't, you know, I'm not a fan, but he is that good. I'm not a fan either. I'm like you, Boris. And, I'm a yeah, BR46. And when, and when, I believe and yellow. That went, and when that, and that when that went to shit, Mark injured himself, and you know, like they paid him you know, a gajillion dollars for sitting on the sidelines and getting his arm repaired or his diplopia, you know, fixed. Um, they're fucked. Without him, they are utterly fucked. Nakagami can't develop anything. Fucking Polis Bagara spends more time picking gravel out of his fucking ass than he does <laughs> racing motorcycles. Yeah. Um, and who's left? No one. Nobody. They, 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 didn't, they, didn't, they didn't confirm the, the Mir move, right? Yeah, don't, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know that Mir's, Mir's a great rider. He, I mean, he, he became champion by, 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 by luck. crashing for a whole season. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Coming yeah, second I, and third. I never liked him, and he's he's mentally he's he's mentally fragile, like a lot of those guys are. A lot of Spaniards that seem to be mentally fragile, um, 
we'll see how we go towards the end of the season. I mean, I think Peko is a bit mentally fragile too. Fabio, I don't know. If I, I'm a f- huge Fabio he's, fan. I think he's, he's fucking Captain Stupid is just well, fucking fantastic, right? The topless <laughs> motorcycle. If, if I had a body like that, I'd have my clothes off too all the time. <laughs> um, you know. But now he's blind. Now he's blind, he now says. Now he's blind as well. That's what? <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> All this season he's been blind and now he's telling us? Like, what the heck is going on? Maybe maybe we should, like, replace him with his evil cousin, Fabio Di Antonio. I don't know. <laughs> see, the, see Fabio, that. The, Fabio the lesser. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the, oh, that's what I said. That's what I said on my um, – uh, I, I have a video on my personal channel, Shameless Plug. Um or, or, or I, I came out with something called Mo- MotoGP for dummies, and I was just kind of like explaining like what the sport is and who rides in that sport. And I was like, I was like, yeah, Miguel sister fucker Oliveira, uh, uh, Darren dive bomb bender. Oh, and 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 then that, and then now we have the lesser of the Fabios, Fabio digits, DG Antonio. I was like, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. There, there, there was one race I forgot what race it was where where I had a little bit of hope because because he was he was riding with the top dogs for a little bit and then he just went like straight to hell well right he, he's that. a rookie and you know you got you got to hand it to him I mean, both him and, and Bezzecchi, um have been they, they, they stuck their dicks out a little bit this season you know yeah they stuck their dicks out a bit um and more more all praise and power to Rossi at VR46 he's actually trying to stem the Spanish tide by yeah. by giving guys like you know Bezzecchi and Digi Antonio and you know he he's the guy who taught Pecco to ride he's the guy who taught fucking Morbidelli Pfft, made my tongue turn black I don't know what the fuck yeah yeah hold well yeah. on yeah. <laughs> motherfucker how long does it take for a knee to heal up Did, no, can shit, can we discuss right? about that too Did Valentino Rossi Break if, if, no 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 like the way that I the way that I saw it you know it, it's prior prior to Pico you know uh Valentino Rossi gave the 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 throne to to Morbidelli kind of saying like here take take off of VR46 and make us proud that didn't happen and now you know Pico's the one that that took control over that yeah well no one knows what's happened to more Frank Frankie he was second in the championship I think two years ago he was you know you could see he was banging that fucking Yamaha the crash seriously yeah, he was great. But then he hurt his knee, and then he came back and he was like shit. He like like he's seriously shit. I mean, he he finished ninth, I think, last last race. That's his best season, best finish all season. But there wasn't that, that crash in Austria. I think it was what really messed him up. The one that tumbled and almost hit the other riders when he, with when Rossi. He, when he's bi- yeah, yeah, when his bike almost. Since then, I think he's been. And, yeah, since then, I think he's been broken. That's actually a good point, mate. I th- I think that's. That's probably what's happened. Um, fear, you know, maybe. Well, you can't have fear if you're a MotoGP rider. Well, he you changed. Can't. He now shaved yeah. his head. He's a totally I different man. Lex Luthor, like Brazilian Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see he's, what he's going to do. Got I'm... Those, those big fuck me lips, though, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, juicy, those are. Juicy, that's it. <laughs> the, the the show, you got something to say, man? Oh, yeah. Uh, I understand you're a big Valentino Rossi fan, right? Absolutely. Damn, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually named my son Hayden Rossi after Nikki Hayden and Valentino. Oh, and we wow. Rossi. Oh, look, yeah. I, I actually met Nikki Hayden once. Oh, cool. And, and oh, man, this this was so cool. I've got to tell you this story, right? Um, I was at Phillip Island, and it was a Thursday, so you kind of get there earlier kind of thing. And I was wandering around. There's this, this bar that lives at the bottom of the main street. And it was uh, Thursday afternoon, and I've walked in to get a beer, as you do, and there's fucking Nicky Hayden sitting by himself having a meal with a beer. Wow. And I've gone, I said to my friend, fuck me, Dad, that's Nicky Hayden. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, you never <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, it's fucking Nicky Hayden. What the fuck, right? I've walked over and I said, hi. Oh, what do you fucking say to them? You know, Jesus, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know me, but you know, I'm not going to ask you for autographs and shit, but I'd just like to say I'm a huge fan, blah, blah, blah. And he, like every American I've ever met, was just the nicest bloke you'd ever want to meet. Oh, hi, he said, you know, you, you want to sit down? I was no, nah, man, fuck, I don't want to interrupt your, your lunch, you know. But he was lovely. He was just fucking really nice, and I carry that memory. I always carry that memory with me as he's one of the just, just a beautiful fucking bloke, you know. Yes, he was. All right. The, the, uh, 
<laughs> and his family boys and his family as well. They're all very yeah. nice and all his sisters Roger, take care Roger of his school. all his all his little sisters take care of the family and they do all kinds of shipping and things like that. That's great. Yeah. They're they're a tight little family. Yeah, on 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 turn on turn 18, I wanted to bring this up on turn 18 where uh, Andy was my crew chief and I, I was a medic. Um we had we had like a Nikki Hayden flag and then we all we all took a group picture together and it was just a gigantic Nikki Hayden flag and like like when when Mark when Mark took it and like and like when he won Coda last year and he and he took it, I was like, oh, that plucked up my heartstrings. I was like, man, like like I'm new to the sport, but get, get, uh, damn. put it down, don't touch it. <laughs> that that flag that he's referring to was Jason Owen. I want to give you Jason. I want to oh, give you Jason a shout Owen. out, Jason yeah, Owen. Yeah. He was actually uh, he's he's uh, he was my he was my crew chief. He took care of several yeah, yeah. turns along with the one that I was taking care of. That was the flag that that they gave to him. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we're we're trying we're, we're we're trying to get Chris to to come to Coda next year. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to Coda. I'm also going to British Superbike next year at Calwell Park. But I want to ask you a question, boys. Who do you think the most underrated rider in MotoGP is? Gee, that's a good question. Um, I think Luca Marini's coming on very well. Um, he he certainly seems to be trying a lot harder. Um, I don't know, look, that that's that's. Oh. Such a difficult question. Um, could I say Zarco? Ooh, yeah, Zarco's man. fast though. Yeah. Zarco gets top speed. Yeah, he's... yeah, yeah. Miguel Oliveira, the you know, sister Ruder and Jorge Martinez. <laughs> um, you know, he, the, the other jaw, the other Jorge, right? The Jorge the lesser. Um, <laughs> I, I think all these guys are potentially, you know, killers. Absolute yeah. killers. But, you know, again, they haven't been there that long. It seems to me that it takes a couple of years to get up to speed. More training. And, yeah, more tr more, more racing, more more the, the, the hard shit, you know. Seat like, time, you know, seat time, yeah. Seat time, that's it. You know, boxers get in the ring, and the, the way you get better is by punching people harder and more often. <laughs> yes, sir. That, that's it, you know. Um, and I think that's what's happening here. But it's also... The, the, the sport is developing constantly. The, the laps are getting faster. Yes. Mar Marquez is not the dominant force that he was. I don't know whether he ever will be again. I'd like to. You know, I'd like that. We like that fucking Mark back. You know, at, yeah. at his peak. I want to see but, you get his one hundred. Yeah. I never want to see him get a, a ninth or a tenth because that means he'll equal Rossi and fuck that. Me too, Boris. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, fuck Me too. You. <laughs> but we don't. But Boris, Boris. I mean, we. All, I'm a. I'm a huge Rossi fan. Okay, but but Rossi's no longer with us. You know. I mean, we are he's essentially. No with us. He, he's left. He left us. He's, he's, he's always with us. <laughs> well, yes, of course. But he left to go and drive a car. Let him drive a car, and now we... I mean, essentially, we're MotoGP fans first before we're any fans of any rider, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. But Even though know, that I'm a huge know, Rossi fan myself, you know, Please understand, but... Rossi, Rossi has been formative in my MotoGP. I mean, I've, we've watched him for so long, it's almost impossible to contemplate a race with him. Yes. Again, with Danny Pedrosa and Jorge Lorenzo. These are the... So many I years. remember those epic, epic battles. And we haven't had that. We haven't yeah, had that now. We haven't had that. We haven't had that, and I think that's that's the measure of a Rossi's ability and b Rossi's personality. Rossi was the X factor. Yes. He had it all. Yeah, he could the charisma. Sang. That's it. That that's yeah. exactly. And he was so it. adaptable. You know, like Mar Marquez everything. is a fucking robot. He's a robot, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, and he's fucking spectacular rider. But off camera, he's just. You I mean you guys saw those fucking lame ass celebrations that he did whenever he gets a fucking world championship? He yeah. held up the eight ball. What the fuck yeah. is that shit? You know? Where, where, where's the fucking his... sex doll tied to the back of your fucking motorcycle? Because it looks yeah, good on life, camera. It looks, force. Yeah. it looks good on camera, Boris. It's it's manufactured. Yeah. And it, it falls flat. Whereas Rossi seemed to be, when, you know, when he tied that fucking doll to the back of his bike, because Biaggi was fucking Claudia Schiffer and he was yeah, fucking stuck it up. Or... <laughs> Boris. I mean, the world's gone. What the fuck is that even, you know? But Boris, but 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 Valentino Rossi, I mean, pretty much excel MotoGP in '96. You know when he started coming around. I I when I when I start okay, so I started like in '99 watching MotoGP, and I wasn't watching it. I was reading it on the back of a magazine, reading about the the finishes and the points and stuff like that. And I was like, who's this Rossi kid? Like, and I was a kid myself. 
you know? And then I started watching and finally, and, and, and he won, he wins hearts and minds just the way that he behaves and wins. Totally. And, and totally. I, that's something that no other writer has right now. I agree with you. And I think, I think it's absolutely genuine. I, I have not met Valentino, um, but everyone I've spoken to who has met him says he's exactly like that in real life. He's genuine. He's interested. He, um, I know journos who've met him and interviewed him over the years. He remembers their fucking names. Wow. And, th and that's an amazing thing. You know, you don't see a journo for a whole year like Ken Wooten and, and Valentino. Ken, it, it's been, uh, how have you been last year? And he remembers your name, you know? Wow. And that's huge. That's huge. That is huge memory. Wow. How can you remember that? Yeah, that's that, that, that's how you know you're the guy. And writes it down. I don't know, right? <laughs> but the guy, but the guy, Rossi was one of the guys that he can do a lap after lap. Like he's got this thing, and like that's his style. I mean, he can ride lap twenty and lap sixty the same times, and and his mentality is like the same. Like maybe he can remember names due to that. I have no clue. But the guys, I think, I think, and it's been proven. Rossi's one of the most ruthless riders out there. He's absolutely an absolute of our era, of our race. era. You know, like fuck me, dead. He's um, you, you know, he's a nice guy on camera and shit. He gets the whole media persona, but on track, he will fucking kill you. Yes, fuck, you know, <laughs> the fuck, I'm kicked him off in Spain in 2015. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah. For uh, uh, at least a side piece for for viewers that I'm trying to bring in. So picture Valentino Rossi is, is the GOAT of MotoGP, right? Is the undisputed GOAT of MotoGP. Yes, sir. The, his impact on the sport, how he handled things, everything to merchandise sales too, is the equivalent to Michael Jordan of basketball. Like Great analogy. Yep. Great they analogy. are the exact same thing. And and when I see Mark Marquez and, uh, and, and, and I see the way he handles himself and he is kind of like robot-like outside of, outside of GP – but he's also ruthless. It reminds me of a LeBron James almost, because LeBron is kind of the same way. And for 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 the kids, for the kids that are getting into the sport, they haven't seen Valentino Rossi, but they've seen Mark. So I, I, that, that's that's why I'm like I'm like a lot of a lot of the new fans like like they they, they see they see Mark Marquez and like oh man this guy is phenomenal, but they haven't seen Rossi. Just like how people see LeBron James, they're like oh man LeBron James is the greatest of all time, but you're forgetting Michael Jordan. So that's uh, that that's how I kind of parallel. Um, the the sports together, and that's how I explain yeah, to a, people. That's a great analogy. That's a really good analogy for Americans, yeah. at least. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I've heard of LeBron James, but I, I don't know. That's a basketball, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's, <laughs> but everyone, he's everyone's heard of Michael Jordan. Yes, because because exactly. he's he's the same yeah, as he's, Valentino Rossi. He's, yeah, he's the one a that Iconic. grew up basketball. Yeah, a fucking Absolute killer. Icon. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and the, but. And, and then, like you know, um, and and then people, you know, people like to argue that that you know LeBron is better than Mike. But then there are some people that, will, like, oh, I like Marquez better than Rossi. But like, but why? Like, like, like Rossi's the one that started this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Rossi ran so Mark can walk. So it's that's like, it. That's it. That's you know it. what I mean? So I, I like I like putting those two parallels together because it makes sense to to my people here. And they're like, oh, now I gotta watch this Rossi guy. What makes him so great? Like motherfucker, look at the stands. Look at all the yellow freaking flags and still, smoke, still till this, this day, till this day, motherfuckers in Kona were like Rossi, Ross. I'm like, I'm like, dude's not even here. <laughs> like, yeah, that. yeah. I mean, he still sells more merchandise now that he's left. Well, wait, well, well, buy another fucking well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. But, but Boris, you buy a Marquez T-shirt, and the one that makes the T-shirt is Valentino Rossi. <laughs> well, he used to. Are he, you he changed? He changed oh. after their after their little um disagreement Quiet. on the track, yeah, and all that shit. When you know Italy was withdrawing ambassadors from Spain, and Spain was threatening to send tanks to fucking Rome, because it went <laughs> off. I mean, you guys may not have seen how fucking <laughs> vicious that was, but um, in the in the Italian media and the, and the Spanish media, this was a fucking declaration of almost war. <laughs> they, the fucker, they lost their fucking shit over this. And so oh, Marquez said, no, you're not, you're not fucking making my T-shirts anymore. And Rossi said, I don't give a fuck. I make T-shirts for everyone else in the paddock. Yeah. You know, it, 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 that's, what, that's what I do. I mean, fuck off. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and he still, to this day, will not forgive Marquez. For that's, that. that's what we're missing. That's, that's what, what we're, we're missing. missing. That, that rivalry. Yeah. That, they're all fucking hugging and kissing on the fucking podium now. Like, yeah. The best of mates. Uh, you, you know? He's a guy. He's yeah, my brother. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off, you know? Like, yeah, this guy's my brother. 
that's, that's what I'm saying. And, and I, yeah, I, I, really. I, talk, I talk to the boys all the time. Um, uh, and and I, I don't mean to I don't mean to talk about other more other sports, but Formula One is now really big here in America because of Drive to Survive and the yes, drama that goes here, there. Same here. Whether yeah. right, wh- whether the drama is true or false or, or over dramatic, it doesn't matter. It gets people to talk about the sport. So when when MotoGP came out with that trash bucket of a show called MotoGP Unlimited, <laughs> no, uh, Unlimited, uh, uh, Unlimited, whatever, Unlimited, whatever. It should be eliminated, but I was like, I was like, yes, like, like we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna see some gritty, nasty shit, like, oh no, uh, I I love uh, I love every abadi here, and yeah, everyone's yeah. so yeah. nice. I, I had to cook the kebab behind the fucking motorhome with my friends. You know, fuck yeah. off, oh, my you god! Know, why are you in the sharpening a knife to cut fucking Pekka Bagnaya's fucking face off? That's, That's, what That's what we want. Yeah, yeah. I was I, I was I was That's like, yo, Fabio, they, like, that's why they pulled it. That's why they pulled yeah. it. Oh, okay. Did, did you watch it when it came out with the with, with the stupid English dub? <laughs> yeah, I had to fucking pop. I got my son. I said, can you get me something where they're actually speaking their language instead of the stupid English dubbing? And so we, we pirated some shit off Pirate Bay, and I actually saw it with the subtitles, right? And it was much, it was much better, but it was still, it lacked, um, you know, Drive to Survive is fucking great. It's television. Yeah, yeah. It's, my missus. Does, my wife doesn't is not into motorsports, but she was riveted by by, by Formula One, the, the Formula One drive to survive, and that's that's, that's the secret lot. I think to making yeah. um great television. If you if I can just segue into Top Gear, you know you've got a Top Gear with Jeremy yeah, Clarkson absolutely. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's a fucking motoring show that women watch. Women don't watch motoring shows because it's not about the motoring; it's about the dynamic between the three um, stars, Clarkson and those other two idiots. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's great television. That it, it's entertainment, which is what we realise in Moto PG. We can give you information, but we're essentially here about entertainment. And that's what people want. They want to be entertained. Same that's with it. us, man. We're we're we're, yeah. we're your American counterparts, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and I support. Look, I, we will push you guys as much as we can. We'll try to flick the same here. Over you and say over to you. I mean, that's what it's about. You yeah. you love the sport. You're genuine in your love for the sport. You you genuine your appreciation of it. You understand it. Because you do, we can laugh at it, right? That's, That's right. right. I'm saying you know? it, gets, it gets more people involved, man. Like, mm. like it's it's a little too clean cut. Like, like these guys or or all of you guys are so lucky. Y'all got to see an era where people are trying to kill each other. I have to go to World Superbike for that because I'm not going to see that in MotoGP because these guys know who who the undisputed goat is in my head. Dobra. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the future MotoGP champion. I'm calling it right now, folks. <laughs> Let's ask Boris what's gonna. T- Boris, what, what do you think is gonna happen? Will I mean, uh, will he ever move up to MotoGP in the next couple of years? He's gonna top, beat the top, shit out top of rack, all top rack. Oh, yeah, look, um, top rack is certainly slated for Yamaha. Um, maybe 2024 in a couple of years. Maybe yeah, halfway to. Well, okay. it could happen a lot quicker. Halfway through twenty twenty three, if Fabio was, to, if if Yamaha doesn't fucking bring something to the fucking table next year, um, because at the moment Fabio Quattararo is, is is to Yamaha what Marquez is to Honda. Yeah, he's yeah, the only one who's bringing anything fucking okay. to, to the yeah. table. He's riding the wheels off that thing at the limit. Um, at the limit, you know, and the, his handicap boy. He's not a great wet weather rider, as you saw when he no, he's not four hundred and twenty seventh in the last fucking race. <laughs> you can see him. You can see him. You can see him sweating before the yeah, race. Like, yeah, oh my yeah. god, guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, uh, I, I don't uh, know if you saw the interaction on 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 the grid with you then, know, fucking Alicia Spagaro's waving his arms and going, "It's, it's fucking too much rain." And yeah. Fabio's going, "Shut the fuck up, dude! I, I can't. Doesn't matter how much rain, I can't ride it in any way. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just going to go backwards now, right? Just fuck off and do you, right? But I'm just going to fucking try not to die for the next 20, 21 laps, you know. And that's what happened, pretty much, you know. Uh, I, don't know. I just think Top Rack is is the biggest X factor to come. That's just my thing. I feel like he outrides the shit of that Yamaha. He does, like, but uh, I think." Sorry, you've got to, you've got to, we all, we all think, oh, he's the next big thing, he's the next big thing. And then they could, they leave from whatever fucking they're doing, BSB or Superbikes or Moto3 or Moto2, and they're confronted with the monster that is a MotoGP bike. And suddenly everything they know about fucking racing motorcycles goes out the fucking window because this thing 
this is a fucking prototype. This is not, you know, a modified fucking superbike or, or whatever the fuck. Or This is a fucking monster. This is Optimus Prime on wheels. Yeah. Fucking, <laughs> it fucking hates you. It wants to kill you. You know, I, I remember talking to fucking Jack Miller years ago before he got his fucking um, uh, Ducati a factory ride. And I said, mate, what's the difference between, you know, the, what you're riding and what, say, Valentino Rossi is riding? And he said, it's really simple. I fucking got a basic motorcycle with one button uh, and there's another button and there's all this other shit I have to do, whereas Rossi has three buttons, you know, on the left hand. He says, fuck off, fuck off faster and fuck off really fast. <laughs> and that's what he presses, right? <laughs> and there's no team orders, there's no nothing. It's just fucking press that button and go. You got to love Jack, man. <laughs> Let, 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 let him do what he got to do. Show you got something to say, man? Uh, uh, how close was Fabio actually leaving to Yamaha? To leaving Yamaha? Yeah. How how close was Fabio to actually leaving Yamaha? Or was where, where, where would he go? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Ducati? I mean, yeah. there's 40 of them shits. They, why, I don't think Ducati wants a French rider. No, they don't. No. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, <laughs> I mean, they, they, they've got a fucking ma- major posse of killer riders. Um, and, they do. You know, and they still can't be close to a championship yet again. Um, I don't think it was smart of them to fucking have Davizioso there. He brought very little to the table. Yeah. Um, Oldest rookie. And, the yeah. sabbatical killed him. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, but I don't know, Fabio leaving to go to Ducati... Look, it's it's possible his contract's up next year, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, again, Mark Marquez, you know, his contract's up in two years. Um, just to be the greatest of all time, bitch, you got to jump on another fucking brand of motorcycle. Let's yeah. see how you. Let's but see I how see you. But much, not on a Honda. But, but, but Boris, yeah. Mark does not want to do that. Mark wants to. He's loyal to Honda. He does not want to leave. He want to finish with the team. Yeah, I, I, look, I agree with you. I think so too. But as that is happening, you you see in the in the lower classes, you know, Pedro Acosta is coming, and Pedro yes. Acosta is a baby fucking a, monster. Baby, baby Acosta, Jesus, right? It, baby Jesus is a fucking monster. Um, Ruthless Munoz, fucking Moreira. Yeah. Um, yeah. These are fucking Jesus. They they're not scared. They're not scared of, they don't care about reputations. They don't care about anything. They're coming. You know, Top Rack, he, if he comes, he's going to come to prove something, you know. Um, he's going to come large. He's going to come large and strong. But whether he can actually <laughs> ride the fucking MotoGP bike, I don't know. Well, he... you guys excuse me for two seconds while I let my sure. dog before he eats my fucking house. Absolutely. I'll be right back. Go ahead, man. No, no problem, no problem. But yeah, man, like, like it, it just goes to show, bro, like how how tightly um, compact the talent pool is, guys. And uh, I, again, I, I'm glad that I joined in an era where talent is uh, is is not scarce. It, it's everywhere, and anyone could get booted out anytime. Oh yeah, and but. Uh, while, so while, while he's while he's not there, um, Jake Gagne, bro. Jake Gagne. Yeah. He's in Port. He's in Port Mal. We got Dustin Corner over there. He's been messaging me, um, feeding me info about the status of of Jake Gagne, and showing me how the Toprak team comes and check out Gagne's bike to to, oh. to you know give him the eye and see what's going on. The, um, the American goat and yeah. the world goat. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of um we got some americans there i mean we got um uh Gerolf, right girl off yeah Gerolf, we got yeah. kayla kayla is over there as well oh, yeah, on the art on the r3 yep so she's yeah. she's american and is representing in Port Mao, and i love that yeah freaking yeah yo boris we were just talking about how I, one of our guys jay gagne is over there man got a wild card oh, jay yeah. Gag- oh we call him gagne yeah yeah gagne. Gagne. i was just gonna say that <laughs> gagne yeah. I love him. He's great. He's a fucking deal. He's he's a yeah. monster, man. And he's and great. The fact that he's already better than three riders over there it brings a smile to my face on on free practice one. And these are riders that've been there for a minute, and he's already smoking those guys. So I'm like, let's go. The guy. It's, it's great to see that you know. Well, you know, you, again, like like you guys are a much bigger gene pool than we do. There's a fucking lot of Americans out there. 
Um, <laughs> and I, I'm actually disappointed that you're not, you know, I, I, I long for the days of Kaczynski and Rainey. Yeah. And those monsters that you had, you know, what the fuck happened? You, you know, what happened? It died in America. It died. It has slowed down. Nobody's racing. The tracks are deteriorating. The talent has slowly dying and, you know, there's only there, there's only so big of a group, and we kind of all know know each other. Yeah, yeah. We, we, which music. is yeah, we, we, which is why I'm like I'm I, I was so banking on Bobier, dude. I was banking, I was throwing everything from my bank at Bobier. I was like, come on, bro, come on, yeah. please. And then and then now I, I'm glad I'm glad that they they made this this move with Sek. Uh, Chris, if if, if you want to jump in, feel free. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm stacking all my chips with with sdk now because what what, what he did here in, in america with with uh, our middle sport our, our middle um our middle bike class here i feel like his his skill will translate eventually to to the moto 2 bike versus someone who came from a super bike and was racing super bikes for god knows how many years how many titles he's won here and coming back down to, to moto 2 at his age so i'm like there's there's a slight advantage for sdk here and i I just I want to see something like I'm I'm banking on it so hard. <laughs> I, I think he's going to struggle because, uh, as you say, I think the biggest problem that, that they encounter when they come back from from MotoGP is there. A the race tracks are a lot better over there; they're much smoother and shit. Hundred um, percent. You know what I mean? And then they come back to like they come back to Australia and they ride our fucking goat tracks, or they come back to America and the bitumen's fucking disintegrating, and <laughs> it's not that fucking. Um, level of, of, of let's say professionalism. professionalism it's it's up there over there it's up there with us you know our asbk guys are hugely talented you know australian superbike guys are hugely yeah, yeah. talented um like like your blokes but um when they come back from from the european circus and those magnificent racetracks over there and that level of you know techs that they got the mechanics the whole team thing and suddenly it's fucking club racing again yeah. Yeah, no, that's fucking what it is. Boris, but but uh uh Danilo Petrucci has some issues when he came over here, same thing. He he had <laughs> That was fucking great. That was great. That was burn that was motherfucker. The best shit, the best I, shit. I had conversation with Where's my helicopter? I crashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Americans gave him so much shit over that. My god. Yeah, the fucking we we shoot yo, we like <laughs> like I I've never America is such an undivided country, but I've never seen this form of unification till Petrucci came here. Like now, everybody, great. everybody's anti-Italian. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, the yeah, motherfucker yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. where's my fucking care. helicopter? You know, he's coming back to Moto America this, next year. Yeah, yeah, oh, those are rumors. Back. Yeah, like, what do you think is going to happen with uh, the new Petrucci, Boris? Um, there's there's noise that he's going to um, World Superbikes. Yeah, the noise that he's going to BSB. Yeah, um, yeah, you know it's it's he, he's he, he's tired. Bang, bang. Listen, he's, he's shitting here at American tracks. Wait till he goes to BSB. He's oh yeah, really fuck. Shit. yeah, Cadwell he's Park done. when he fucking yeah, launched fucking himself done. into the fucking sun. Right, you come over that yeah, fucking Cadwell fly. Park and just fucking Absolutely. you're flying. You know, fucking it's all over. Um, Look, the guy can bang you. The fact he won a, a, a stage of the Dakar is yeah. astonishing. I thought, fuck me, look at this. Um, but, you know. He's no. busy this year. He was busy. He's, he's busy. tired. He's, yeah, yeah, man. Absolutely. He, you know, I think his experience in America fucking woke him up. He, he <laughs> spent many years in, um, in the MotoGP thing being fated like a god. Because they're all gods, you know, even the yes. guys running at the back for fucking, you know. They are. And then he comes to America and, bitch, this is club racing, get the fuck, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Which, it, it was, it was kind of cool to see. Like, like yeah, you know, we, 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 we thank him, and we say it all the time, like, like we thank him for, for coming here and bringing eyes to our sport. But if, if he thinks that BSB is going to be, is going to be something that's, that's slightly better, he'll tell him to have fun to race on those tracks that are tighter than a Catholic nun's cat box. So yeah, it's look, like... <laughs> it's hilarious because we we've got Jack Miller and Marcel Schrotter and Josh Hook, who's the current twenty four hour endurance champion, coming to Australia to race the final round of our Australian Superbike Championship um, this year. Uh, he did it last year. Um, he didn't win, but he came he came very close. Um, and That's cool. 
that, that's really cool when you know, a like bona fide MotoGP star turns up to contest a local round. It's fucking great. I wish more of them would do that. Me too. Um, but their contracts don't permit it, unfortunately. Whereas Jack, Jack's fucking going to KDM. He doesn't give a fuck what you get. He says after you know the, the last. There's the liability race. issue. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I could understand. I could understand. You know, they are they are actually racing for fucking cattle stations and oil wells. There's millions and millions of dollars involved. Um, right. Hence team orders, hence all that bullshit they go through. There's a lot of money at stake here. And as we said earlier, Dorna is a, a business. Yeah. It's about making money, you know. Television, that's where it is, television rights. I mean, right. fuck what, three motherfuckers in Kazakhstan ride a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> You know? the, 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 the only thing I know uh, from Kazakhstan is is they they produce very good boxers. Yeah, like, uh, and that, Borat. That, that's all I know. And Borat, yeah, yeah. big Borat. success. And Borat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You make um, movie. I'm happy ending. I'm happy times. <laughs> happy. My sister is number three prostitute in village. <laughs> they fucking they fucking hate him in Kazakhstan. They do. They, they do. Hate him. He brought brought country into disrepute. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Freaking hate that track, but yeah, it, it's it, it's cool to see that the GP guys come down and actually look human. I I like I the when 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 Petrucci came down and like I was I was told I was told way before because I have I have some somewhat of a relationship with Warhorse Ducati. They're about forty five minutes away from me, uh, at least their Manhattan store. I live in New York City, so. When, when, when I heard that he was coming down, I was like, "Man, we're we're gonna get smoked, dude!" And then Andy, me and Andy had a bet, and he, this motherfucker, thought that Petrucci was gonna sweep the season. And I was like, "You're bugging, you're you're crazy if you think Petrucci's gonna sweep." The I American arrived, season. I, I arrived in Virginia, and I met Chris, and we started analyzing Jay Gagne style and things like that. Um, and I was, I was, I. I was no longer convinced that Danilo Petrucci was going to go ahead and take off with the with the sweep the championship. But, but so he did pretty well. He did, he pretty, did pretty well. You he know, did given, phenomenal. Given, yes, yeah. he given, did. Ex- given what he was up against, I think what fucked him was, you know, the, the goat tracks that he had to race on. He's not used to that shit. He's not well, used to, yeah, you know, the, the support. And I had a conversation with one of his. Mecha- I had a conversation with one of his mechanics, and that was his whole concern: is the runoff on the American tracks, <laughs> the, the, fa- <laughs> the fact that the marshals are not running out to go and help him, <laughs> and those type those type the, of things. The, the good old American <laughs> hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, man. I picked up the last one. You know, you fuck off. Yeah. You pick him up. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I don't know if you saw Boris, but uh, there, there were there were two. There was one South African writer and there was one American writer. Uh, Ma, uh, uh, Flint, um, Max Flinders and Matthew Skoltz. This was in Virginia. Yeah. Petrucci just like shoulder bumps both of them inside, yeah. and then and he goes. <laughs> like, just, What's up? The good old American, like yeah. middle finger, and we had we had Flinders, we had Flinders on, on, on the, the show cast, because, yeah. Because uh, this guy Matthew Skoltz and Petrucci, they they've been fighting each other all fucking season. Great. So, which is what which is what made Moto America so great this season. Yeah, but anyway, absolutely. so so we, we had Flinders on the podcast, and and we asked him about that incident, and Flinders was like, "Yo, I don't know what happened. Friendly fire, like he hit us, and then he turned, the, he just flipped us off." I was like, "What the fuck?" Did we do dude and, and and i think i think uh again correct me if i'm wrong boys um i think flinders said that uh because of that like i think his his left um uh, right clip on his, oh, his right clip on the right clip on yeah his right clip on came off and apparently flinders's father was about to go there and start some shit so i was like yo he was wait y'all like this is what we need i like it this i was oh yes so it's like moto gp has never been more exciting than when two riders two big personalities clash you know yeah rossi yeah. Gibbonow, rossi yeah. stoner rossi marquez you know, again rossi 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 I, i'm not seeing that now no. i'm not seeing that at all um you no, know like i said they're all they're all you know <laughs> bums bum slapping and hugging and shit you know, straight off Good game, Grandpa. You, yeah, hey, fuck, you know, a bit of Italian fucking on the backside kind of shit, you know. But right. the fuck, you know, where's the hatred? <laughs> where's the hatred? The where's only the time, hatred? the only time we don't want unity is in sports. I love it. It's war by another name. It is. It is. It, it, it is. It is. That's what it is. I mean, you guys in the world, the soccer World Cup is coming up. We call it soccer here too because football is the the the. 
did. The, the other one, yeah. Hand, hand, hand the other did. one. And when you, you watch France and Italy play, they fucking hate each other's guts. Yeah. You know, Spain and Portugal, fucking and Serbia, France. Croatia, fuck me dead. If they had knives, it'd be fucking <laughs> fantastic. Give us knives. We're going to go <laughs> at it hard, you know? Dude, and, and, and the fans go crazy. Like, like yeah, they fight each yeah. other. They start riots. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't want that here, but you know, <laughs> like, no, you guys, you guys are like us. We're we're extremely well mannered at sporting events. You know, we, yeah. we we chant, we do that shit. But you know, you you fucking go overseas, and it, it's a fuck, it's a war. They're setting shit on fire. They're hauling <laughs> cops up off the thing and beating them half to death. You know. Like, you got the shield and the baton. Yeah, fuck you. Fucking get here, you know? I'm pulling the fucking seats off the thing and beating police to death with it because fucking soccer. Steel yeah. chair, WWE style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They love that shit, right? Yeah, we, we yeah, we, we need we need more more drama here because I feel like I, I mean, feel like Formula One is doing the, the right GP thing. crowd the motor GP crowds are the same. You go to Italy, you go to Spain, you go to France. I mean the, a fucking French drink for three days, burn everything. <laughs> you know, there, oh, there's a fucking there's a race on on Sunday. We used to do that here when we had um when the Australian GP was held at Bathurst. I don't know if you've heard of Mount Panorama. It was mm. it, it's it's like the Isle of Man shit. It is a deadly. Dead. They can never run motorcycle races there because it's too deadly. They still run car races there, and it's just a crash fest. But there's no, there's no runoff. There's just fucking walls, and and it's it's fucking horrific. And we'd go up there, and we would riot. We would have, you know, fight with the cops. We would set fire to shit. We would demolish toilet blocks. It was a fun <laughs> weekend out for the whole family. Um, but that that changed. You know, we we became more civilized, and as a consequence, the flavor's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. And we're not. We're, we're we're like most Western democracies. We we lack passion. Yeah. You know. You know yeah. I think Andy, you're 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 um you're not not Anglo-Saxon. I gather. Anglo-Saxon. <laughs> Anglo, Anglo-Saxon. You're not. You know. You're white American. You know. You're you're the child of, of immigrants. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was born in a little island that is considered part of this country as well. So I'm I'm a citizen. But yeah, I come from yeah, sure. somewhere else. I was born in Australia. Yeah, I was born in Australia, but my parents came from overseas, and we we have that that ethnic passion for yeah. shit. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. You know. Whereas, you know. Australia is a country of English immigrants, so it's all stiff up a lip and fucking we show no emotion and shit like that. And they're anally retentive. Okay. We hug, we kiss, you know, we cry. We're, yeah. we're hugely passionate people. You know? I, I, um, I, I feel like Australians are, are as close to, like, and, and vice versa, as close to Americans than like than to like the UK because like oh, you, you see it. people like you see people like Daniel Ricardo. He's like, man, when I'm in America, I feel like I'm. Uh, he doesn't sound like that, but he's like, when I'm in America, he's like, oh man, I feel I feel like I'm at home. And I'm like, man, well, look, well, you got to understand awesome. your culture has pervaded ours. I mean, forever. It, it's we identify more with Americans than we do with English because we we want to be cool. Yes. We like the rap. We you know your, your whole. Hollywood and the music and shit that that gets into your fucking head um, from from the time you're a small child. The fucking English are boring as batshit, right? Like, we, <laughs> we, we don't saying. we don't want that that gravy soccer hooligan fucking fish and chip eating curry munching crap here. We want the American shit, the frontier. I mean, I, I know <laughs> the I know UFC. more about them. Yeah, fuck that shit. You know, I want to, you know Indians chasing him on the frontier. You know, fucking. John Wayne, um, all that, all that shit. We grew up with that, like you guys did. You know, like I said, when I went to LA, it's like fucking the Terminator was a fucking documentary. Look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> that Boris, that all that has died with with time and things like that. Hollywood is dead. They're not even making movies anymore. I hear you. I hear and you. and you know we're it's we're just, just stuck watching now. the reruns. Yeah. You know. But, but yeah, I understand. I have a buddy over in the UK. He tells me, you know, all about the American movies. And every time that I go somewhere and travel, I send him pictures. He's like, oh, my God, I remember seeing this on a movie. And it's, it's, it's very cool, exciting man. to him. Yeah, it's very cool to him. Yeah, it's because it's, it's cool. Like, like, ah oh man, I, I, I don't. I, I I don't I don't see something from from the UK and uh, no offense I have a lot of friends and family in the UK so no offense to them but I don't go to the UK and be like I want to be like that yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah Chris <laughs> yeah, 
that that's exactly correct. Who the fuck, you know? It was explained to me when I was in Santa Monica that, you know, please understand Santa Monica is not like the rest of LA. LA is not like the rest of California, and California sure yeah. is not like the rest of the USA. Right? Yeah. Um, right. Australia is pretty much fucking Australia wherever you fucking go. Um, there's that weird shit going on in Tasmania, but, you know. <laughs> uh, they're, they're like fucking Saskatchewan, if you know the fucking yeah, Saskatchewan. Like yeah, they're fucking strange. And then you know, New Zealand is like our Canada. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, Very pretty. Oh, it's pretty oh, over there, though. That's fucking there, true. That's they're, they're fucking true fucking, yo. You, you, you pricks are so fucking nice. I want to. They apologize after everything. They're just fucking nice. You know. Whereas Australians are viewed as as violent drunks. Shout out. Essentially, what well, we're violent fuck drunks. Off. Right? You fuck off, man. I'm going to fucking smash you, right? What are you fucking looking at, right? That, that <laughs> shit, right? But um, we, we love it. That, that's, that's what gives That's what gives our, our, our life character, man. Okay. But, um, hey, Boris, uh, we, we, we hit the minute. Uh, the minute. The, wow, the, the, hour. the hour. The hour. The hour 20 mark. And, like, you know, we, we want to continue talking to you. So, um, man, so many questions. Consensus, we would love to have you back, man. man for real, for real. Look, I, I'm happy to get one of you guys. Or, 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 I don't know if we get all three of you blokes on the show. We'll give it a whirl. <laughs> Fuck. Give Rod yeah. something to fucking do in the studio. We'll the sitting pick the name out of a hat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Dude, uh, thank like, you guys it, it was a great honor and, and, and an absolute joy to talk to people who share my passion for the sport absolutely. thank you so yeah. much we listen to you all the time boris yeah we we do we oh, do man. thank you so much we'll for being give you here, a bro. shout out send me send me some fucking hookups some some things we'll post I them on it i got things. you man yes sir yeah, yeah. send we'll it to it. me and we'll fucking yeah. we'll push push this shit all right yeah let's Hell do yeah. it and we'll and we'll uh i'll link the uh the spotify uh link uh, to to you guys' channel on on the description box. Anyways, guys, that is our show. I am once again Cool Jules, Mr. Andy and Delix Rowe, Chris, the show Simcoe, straight from his job, and Mr. Boris of Moto PG. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for waking up so early in the morning. All right. Now, if you guys like this, go ahead and uh, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. If you think if you think Boris sounded great and smooth. Go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. Till next time. Cool jewels. Peace. <laughs>